Okay, drummer tracks and the drum kit designer instrument, part three. And in this chapter we'll be looking at the advanced multiple output producer patch kits. And to get those kits on your system you have to download and install them, which you do here. Download additional content. Okay, so I took some screen capture footage earlier showing how to download and install these extra kits. Uh, so to keep this tutorial complete for beginners, let's watch that footage quickly and then we'll look at these producer patch kits in detail. Okay, now we're going to get the additional content. Um, so we go to our download additional content. Okay, um, I've downloaded all the songwriter kits, all the alternative kits, all the R&B kits, including their drummers, but not the rock kits. So I'm going to just tick everything for the drum kits. It'll download all the rock kits that I haven't installed or downloaded yet and it'll download the drummers to go with that. It'll download all the multi-out kits and the producer patches. I'm going to download the whole lot but I don't want to download the piano or the orchestral stuff or the reverbs or any of this legacy stuff. I just want the drum content. So the, uh, the rock kits, all the multi-out kits and the producer patches. Here we go. Boom. Now it's going to take a while because it's gigabytes of um, of content. Um, so we'll let it all download, and then I'll come back and show you how everything steps up to the next level. So I'll see you later. Okay, just to show you this, uh, the downloads have all finished, and I've opened a new project, and I've gone to add a drummer track, and it's installing the content now. You can see the drummers here that I didn't download, they're also updating as it's installing. Okay, so all that additional content, it gets installed automatically when you run Logic for the first time after downloading. It does take a long time, but eventually it all gets installed and then in your library you have all your stereo kits and you have all your producer patch kits. Okay, now clearly there are more producer patch kits than just one for each of the stereo kits. You've got to remember that each of these producer patch kits, each one loads up its own unique mix. Okay, so you get a whole bunch of additional kits, each of which loads up a very specific mix with things going on in the mix that gives that kit a completely unique sound so that you can have kits that imitate old-fashioned drum kits like Motown Revisited or 60s Soul or Vintage Breaks. Or you can have kits that load up with things going on that do special effects to create something like an 8-bit kit. Okay, So it's about these kits, it's, it's as much about the mix that loads with them as the samples that, that, that they're using. Okay, And we're going to finish this chapter at the end by loading up some of these kits and analysing the mixes that go with them and hopefully that way you can understand better what's going on but also it'll help you to understand drum mixing better All right. but let's start by looking at how the instrument has changed now we've got all the extra content um, I've got Kyle loaded up with his default SoCal stereo kit so I'll load up his producer patch kit SoCal Plus boom like that okay now once you've loaded up a producer patch kit the track header changes, so you have a rectangle like that, and that's because every single one of these producer patch kits is a summing track stack like that. Okay, now obviously I'm not going to explain track stacks in depth now. Um, on our channel, there's a complete playlist of tutorials which explains everything about track stacks, including how to make your own. Okay, it's the first tutorial I ever did for ProX because track stacks are such a massive part of ProX, they crop up absolutely everywhere, like here, that if you don't understand them, you're going to be all sorts of problems you will be in, and you will not be able to be as creative with ProX as you could be. So um, go and watch the tutorials, really. Um, if you learn how to make your own track stacks, you can do some really cool stuff. But to keep this, um, this drum kit designer tutorial complete, I'm going to explain quickly that this is a summing track stack. All producer patch kits are summing track stacks. And the way it works is the track header with the patterns on, it wraps itself around and it contains all the content tracks in the stack. And in the mix, what happens is you have inside the stack, you have your original instrument plus all the separate outs, 
plus any additional channels that are part of that drum stack mix. And the whole drum stack mix is rooted to the group bus in stereo. Okay, and then from here the signal goes off to your final output and off to your speakers. So your entire drum mix routes to your group bus and then the track header with the patterns on, that is the track for the group bus. So when you come to do track automation, you can automate not only the instrument and all the separate outs and any additional channels that are part of the drum mix, but you can also automate the group bus itself. Okay. Okay, that is briefly a summing track stack, but um, go and watch the tutorials on track stacks. Trust me, you, you need to get that down to get the best out of Pro X, all right? Okay, how has the instrument changed? Okay, the instrument is on the first channel and its accompanying track inside the stack. There's the instrument slot. There's the plus minus buttons to add and take away extra outs. We click on the slot to open the instrument. And now we've got all the extra content installed, we just have way more drums. So we've got loads of kick drums, snares, wood and metal types, and tom sets. And we can mix and match between all the different drums. Um, and they're all available in vintage and modern flavours. And it's the same with the cymbals. Our ride, crashes and our hats are available in vintage modern flavours, bright and dark types. Okay, so we can really mix and match to build the kits that we want now. We've got much more choice of drums. Okay, now the other thing that's changed is that we've got lots and lots and lots of separate outs, multiple outs now. Let's look at that next, and to do that I'm going to load up a vanilla kit that's got nothing going on in the mix. Um, now, if you're going to change a producer patch kit, you have to select the track header. You must do that first. Select the track with the patterns on. Then we can change to a different kit. So I'm going to load up this one called Unmixed. Okay, so I've got this vanilla drum kit called Unmixed loaded up. Okay, it's got nothing going on in its mix at all. So we can now just focus on the outputs. And these are all the raw outputs of the instrument. And there's a lot of them, yeah? And what you have to understand with these producer patch kits is that Apple are giving us an imitation of mixing a real drum kit in a real studio with microphones. So all these outputs here, they are imitating microphone channels in a drum recording setup. I'm going to be talking about these outputs as microphone channels. Okay, so just think of them as mic channels in a drum recording setup and it's a lot easier to understand. Okay, so what have we got? Well, let's put the volume up first. Okay, well, we begin with the original stereo instrument channel. It has the instrument slot on it and the plus minus buttons to add and take away extra outs. Again, okay, just like in chapter two when we looked at a basic multi output kit, this original stereo instrument channel handles our cymbals by default. Okay, the cymbals, even on these producer patch kits, the cymbals don't have their own dedicated output. So once you've given an output to all the other drums in the kit, what is left on your original instrument channel is the cymbals. Okay, so this is our cymbals default output. But because all these outputs on producer patch kits are behaving like real microphone channels, this stereo channel is always labelled overheads and it behaves by default as our stereo overhead. So in it we hear not just the cymbals, but below the cymbals we hear the kit as well. Okay, so this behaves by default as our stereo pair of overheads, which are... Look, there's a pair of overheads, look, above a drum kit. There's the two overheads on the left and right above the kit. There's another pair of overheads, look, above the kit. Okay, so in a drum recording setup, the stereo overheads is a pair of mics on the left and the right, up on boom stands, about three or four feet above the kit, pointing down at the kit from above, and they capture a stereo image of the kit from above. So, of course, we hear the whole kit in our stereo overheads. But the cymbals are the loudest because they're higher up, nearer to the mics, and the kit, which is lower in volume than cymbals, also has no bass end because there's a phenomenon with microphones 
which is that the further away something is from a mic, the less bass it has. So we hear the cymbals the loudest in, in this stereo overhead image. Below that we hear the kit, lower in volume and it has no bass end really. Okay, so this is our cymbals output primarily, but the rest of the kit is heard in it. However, as you'll see a little bit further on, we can cheat because uh, obviously this isn't a real stereo pair of overheads so we can cheat and we can take any drums out of the overheads that we like so we can have whatever drums we want in the overheads okay we'll come back to that and that is the overheads okay then what follows after the overheads next we have the main close mic channels for the main kit pieces okay that's the kick the snare the hats and the three toms they are our main kit pieces and these are the close mic channels, which means these are the microphones that are right up close to the individual drum kit pieces. These mics capture an accurate, very close recording of each individual drum. Okay, now these have got noise gates on them, so the microphone gets cut out when the drum isn't being hit. So these, these mic channels, they are close, they are accurate, and they are a very dry sound. Okay, you get no room sound on these mics at all. You just get an isolated sound of the individual drums close up. So if we listen to a basic kick, snare and hats riff, it sounds very accurate but very dry. There's no room sound. Okay, and it's the same if we switch to a tom riff. We get a very dry sound. Very accurate but there's no room sound at all. Okay, so that's your close mic channels. And then you have two room microphone channels here. Okay, now these are rather badly labelled. Room A and Room B suggests to beginners that these are two different rooms. Well, obviously, you can't play a drum kit in two rooms at the same time. These are two different room mic channels. We have a stereo pair of room mics and a mono room mic. Okay, now room mics are far away from the kit. They're not close to the kit. They're away from the kit in the room and they pick up the sound of the drums in the room. So the idea is we have our close accurate channels here which give us a very dry, a very dry, very isolated sound of the individual drums and then we can bring in as much room sound as we want from the room mic channels. Okay so there's this stereo pair of room mics here, this is them solo. It's quite a far away sound, isn't it? Because you can hear, as I said, the drum mics, uh, the room mics, are not close to the kit, so we get a quite distant sound of the drums. But when you blend that in with the close mic channels, it balances out, right? So we have control over how much room sound is introduced into our kit. A very dry sound, or more and more room. Okay, and as I say, we have a stereo pair of room mics here, so I'm going to rename this room mics, or room mic A, because it's a stereo pair of room mics, and this, we also have the mono room mic B, which we can choose, and if we open the instrument, any of these drums can be switched, you can have them out of the room completely, or you can switch them from to go to either room pair of mics A or room mono mic B, so I'll switch them all now. Kick, kick, snare, toms, and the hats are all using the mono room mic now. They're not real room mics, obviously, so we can cheat and we can switch the drums to go to any room mics we want. Whereas in real life, this pair of room mics here and this mono room mic would be in the room and they would always pick up all the drums. But we've now switched all the drums so they're only on the mono room mic here, B. Yeah. Okay, obviously it's mono, so it doesn't have the stereo spread, so it doesn't have the same. Um, this is less intrusive, this mono room mic. Okay, it doesn't have the same attacking sort of top mid. Okay, it's more subtle. But we have a choice. We can use. put all the drums in the stereo pair of room mics, or all the drums in the mono room mic. Or we can mix and match because it's they're not they're not real mic channels, so we can cheat. We could have the kick and the snare taken out of the room mics completely, which you couldn't do in real life. The toms are using and hats are using room mic B, the mono mic. So we have a close sound, and when we bring in room mic B, it's only the toms and the hats. 
So that way we get a very dry kick drum and snare sound and only ambient room sound on the toms and the hats. We could do that. Or we could have uh, the kick going to room mic B, the snare going to room mic B, the hats going to room mic B, and the toms going to the stereo pair of room mics A. That way, again, close mic sound. Here, we've got a close mic sound, accurate and close and isolated. When we bring in room mic B, it's just the kick and snare in mono. And the hats, right? When we bring in the stereo pair of room mics, it's adding stereo room mic sound only to the toms. So you can have any combinations that you want with the room mics. Yeah? Clever, isn't it? It allows you to have complete control over how much ambient sound of the room there is on the kit, either completely dry or more and more and more, whatever you want. Okay, and choice of stereo or mono room mics. Okay, and then finally, we've got this leak channel here. Leak. Okay, now I'm going to put a gainer on this so you can really hear it. It's very subtle normally by default. Oh, this is a stereo channel, this leak. Let's have a listen to it. This is it. Now, what is leak? Well, Apple says it's the sound of the drums leaking onto each other's microphones. It sort of is that. Um, only the kick, snare and the toms have got this leak switch. They can be in or out of the leak channel. Okay? Um, the cymbals and the hats don't have the leak. No, no leak. Because only these three drums, kicks, snare and toms, have got enough kinetic energy to make each other vibrate. Now, Apple says it's the sound of leakage between the microphones. Now, I remember earlier I said that these were the close mic channels here. These are the drums that are right up close to the individual drums. And I said they have noise gates on. Well, they don't really. Obviously, these are samples. This is an instrument. We're listening to samples being triggered, but... <sighs> They act as if they've got noise gates on. They're very isolated channels, but they're using a sort of noise gate that has never been invented and never can be invented. Noise gates that make all the other drums disappear completely on the sound for that particular mic. So on the kick drum mic, we've got kick, snare and toms playing. But when I solo the kick, all I hear is the kick. Okay, when the kick sounds, and opens the noise gate, you still don't get any sound of tom or snare getting onto there, which in real life you would. Now in real life, even with the noise gate on here, even a tight noise gate, for that half second the gate opens, the kick drum goes boom, the, the, the microphone opens up to let that kick drum go through, and as the mic opens up for that half second, it goes open, close, boom, open, close, and as it opens, you'll hear the toms and the snare and the hats, whatever, getting onto that mic, just in that split second, but, Obviously, these are completely isolated. So you don't hear any sound of the nearby drums on the mics for the snare, the kick, the toms, etc. You only hear the snare on the snare channel. There's no leakage from the other drums. And same with the toms, low tom. There's no leakage from the snare or kick getting onto that tom channel. So Apple says that this leak channel introduces leak. You know, the sound of the drums getting on each other's mics. Uh, it's not really that, um, you know. But the way it works is, you know, uh, let's open up the drum kit. If you, we've got leak on all the drums now, okay. So I kick the kick drum. Let's switch to that kick drum. I kick the kick. You hear the snare rattle, you hear the high tom ring, you hear the lower tom ring, you hear the kick itself ring. You hit the snare, you hear this high tom ringing. Yeah, a little bit of ring from the kick and the nearest floor tom. But mainly it's the ringing of the high tom. Hong, hong, like that. The low floor tom right over there. When I hit that one, the snare rattles just a little. When I hit the high tom, the snare rattles way more because the high tom is right next to it. And you hear the snare rattle, you hear the toms ring, you hear the kick drum ring. So... If I take the snare out of the leakage, when I hit the kick, I hear the snare rattle. When I hit the snare, 
I don't hear the other drums rattling. So it's not really leak between the mics. What this leak channel is, it's the sound of the drum kit resonating. And that's why only the, the kick, snare and toms have got it, have got leak. Because they've only got enough, only those drums have got enough kinetic energy to make each other vibrate. So this is the sound of the kit vibrating and resonating. Well, it kind of, it also introduces the sound as if noise gates are not being used. It makes a less isolated sound. You hear the kit vibrate and resonate. Now, normally this is very subtle. It doesn't have a gainer on it normally. And turning it right up even, have a listen. It just introduces more liveness to the kit. The, the, when this is rammed right up, it sounds like the kit is not recorded using noise gates, basically. You hear the kit resonating and vibrating, and you hear a bit of cross between, you know, a bit of leakage, and it sort of sounds like that, but it's not really. Okay, but I like to put a gainer on it, and then you can really ram this sound up to get a kit that sounds really undampened, really resonating, really vibrating, you know, like it's really raw, was recorded really rough with no noise gates, totally undampened. Yeah, lovely. You could think of this as the live, the live channel. Turning this up makes the drum sound less noise gated, less dampened and more live, you know, more humming, more resonating. You know, don't be afraid to put gainer on your leak and try that, or on the room mic channels as well. Okay, so that's that's how it works. It's clever, right? So we have our main drum channels here, and we get a mix together for those. Let's quickly look at these in a bit more detail, because we didn't before. There are two channels for the kick, and they're stereo, both. Each one is a stereo channel. You have an inside kick drum mic, inside the kick drum, and you have an outside kick drum mic. Now, generally speaking, most people, when they mic up a kick drum, they ram a mic inside the kick, bish, bash, bosh, there's my kick drum mic'd up, but don't ever think that you can't use an outside kick drum mic, outside the kick drum. Round at the back where the pedal hits, yeah? <coughs> I remember, oh, I don't do much live work anymore, but about 10 years ago, I was mixing a whole bunch of bands in a big hall. Uh, you know, like, about the size of a typical town hall. And, um, I has I was using my favourite kick drum mic, the Red Five Audio RVD One, which is just such an underrated kick drum mic. If you're doing live drums, go and get one. It's got a very tight cardioid pattern, so it if you put it outside the kick, round by the beta, it rejects off-axis sound really, really good, and it's got a superb sound, very tight, very big sound. And we got a monster kick drum sound that night, and everyone was like, "Wow, that's a really good kick drum sound." So don't think that the outer kick drum mic can't be your primary kick mic. It changes depending on the kick drum that you've loaded up with your kit. Some of the kick drums, like this Birch Punch, the inside kick drum mic is the punchier one and the outer one is softer and bassy. But that's not always the case. So with the kick drum, you get two mics and you can use either the outer one or the inner one by itself or a combination of both. Okay, that's your kick drum mic. Uh, and I'm, just in case you're interested, um, a little drum in drum miking. Oh God, years back, I was working on a session um, with a famous producer engineer. Uh, no names, but he'd had a, a lot, of, a lot of hit records. And his technique, well, on that session anyway, that I was working with him, um, he had a pressure zone mic, a PZM mic, which he had gaffer taped to a butcher's weight. And that was inside the kick, and it did gave a hell of a good kick drum sound. So, if you ever get the chance to try a PZM mic in a kick drum, try it because it certainly works. But it really it has to be gaffer taped something heavy. You see, for me, kick drum mics it's not just about the diaphragm and the design of the circuitry, it's about the weight of the bloody thing. A kick drum mic has to be heavy for me. That's why I like the old D12s, the square black and silver AKG ones, and I hate the new egg shaped one. I, I, and that's why I like the Red 5 Audio one. It weighs a ton. You know, it's it's a great kick drum mic, and I put that kick drum mic, I'll give it the Pepsi challenge against any kick drum mic out there. It really is such an underrated kick drum mic, so go and buy one. But anyway, that's your kick drum mic. You can use either the inner or outer mic, just experiment with, hear which one is the one you want to use, or both blended together. 
Okay, next, smooth those. Next, we got the snare mics. There are two again for the snare. We have a top snare mic. Okay, and we have a bottom snare mic. Okay, now, the top snare mic is always going to be your primary mic. Not like with a kick where you can use one or the other or both blended. The top snare mic is always going to be your primary snare mic. And you can bring in some snare bottom to taste if required. It would be very unusual to use the bottom mic as your primary mic. Okay, so this is the snare top mic. This is the, the microphone pointing down at the top of the snare, one, two, three or four inches away from the snare, right up close to where the drummer hits with the sticks. This is your main snare mic. It picks up all the sound of the snare being hit with the sticks. It picks up all the shell, all the body sound. This is your primary snare mic. Okay, and then you have your bottom snare mic pointing up at the snare from underneath, and this is mostly the snare wire sound, or it's a more pronounced snare wire sound, because it's pointing up at the snare wires underneath the snare. Okay, now initially this sounds quite thin, but don't be fooled. If you put some EQ on it, ram up the bottom end, and shave off the tops, there's actually quite a lot of body on there, right? So, um, you know, bear that in mind. Well, that's your bottom mic, and you would blend that in to taste with the top one. As I say, using the bottom mic on, on its own with, you know, would be very unusual. Okay, the other thing is, you should try sending out your auxiliary reverb send. Like if you're using a drum plate. Send out from the bottom snare mic with just a smidge or no top at all send sending out to the reverb you get a completely different reverb snare sound sending out from the, the bottom mic to the top one anyway so there's your kick and snare you get those mixed and then you know you, and obviously you'd have EQ and, com and compressors or whatever else on your then you bring in your hats and your toms there's your close mic channels all done and then you bring in your room sounds to taste Okay, in this case I've got stereo room mics for the toms and mono room mic for the kick snare and hats. And you bring those into taste and then a bit of leak. Leak to taste as well. And that's it, that's how it works. Easy peasy, yeah. Lovely. Okay, um okay, and then just lastly we've got our three percussion channels. Let's just quickly look at these. Each one is a stereo channel and it's not much to say really. If you've got the percussion playing you just bring these in and blend them into your mix. EQ them, whatever else, and add them into the mix. Okay, now there is one thing to say. On the drummer app we only have access to three percussion instruments. Okay, so if you're using drummer patterns you only have tambourine, shaker or claps for your percussion. But the instrument itself, the drum kit designer instrument, which can also be triggered from MIDI, has these are the volume controls for the percussion. Look, shaker, tambourine, claps, but there's also cowbell and sticks. There are these two additional percussion instruments, cowbell and sticks, but you can only access them from MIDI notes. So if you want to do a sticks counting at the beginning of your drummer parts, you'd have to move it up like that. Grab yourself a pencil and whack in a MIDI pattern, a little MIDI region and then put in the sticks manually using MIDI notes. And your your sticks are on D sharp 4. They're big sticks and all. Have a listen. Oh, listen to those buggers. <laughs> Bloody great tree trunks. <laughs> Flintstones drumsticks. Yeah. They sound like the drumsticks, that, uh, like this, those massive ones like Sly Dunbar used to use when he was working with Black Uhuru back in the eight, early 80s. Yeah. You'd have to put your sticks counting like that with no, uh, dr drum notes, triggering it, and then the drum pattern's coming afterwards. And your sticks your sticks appear on the hand clap channel. Yeah, like that. Also, we have the cowbell, if you were doing some blue, blue oyster cult. <laughs> More cowbell. Oh, there's a the cowbell on G sharp too. Fellas, fellas. I put my pants on the same as everyone else, one leg at a time. But once I put on my pants, I make gold records or whatever. <laughs> I love that, uh, whatever he says, you know, I love that more cowbell. I got a fever! 
Okay, but hey, not just Blue Oyster Cult, not just rock. You know, what about War, Low Rider? Yeah, that's got a fantastic cowbell riff on it. Jazz funk, funky stuff, soul, cowbell are plenty. You know, don't don't think it's just a rock thing. But sadly, you can only get it. You can't use it with the drummer tracks. It's only available from MIDI triggering. So there you go. Uh, oh, and if you're asking, how do I have a cowbell and drummer pattern at the same time? Well, you have your drummer patterns on the track header there. And then you can put MIDI patterns on any of the other tracks underneath. Because remember, the patterns, it doesn't matter what track they're on, they trigger the kit the same. All right, right. So that's how that works. Okay, that's your percussion. Oh, yeah, and did I show it? The cowbell appears on the hand clap channel as well here. Okay, so sticks and cowbell appear on the hand clap channel. What's that? Okay, let's have a look at a couple of last things just to finish up this section on the outputs. Um, I want to go back to these overheads. Okay, now this stereo overhead channel, this is the output for our cymbals. But by default, underneath the cymbals, lower in volume, we also have an ambient stereo image of the whole kit. Okay, now that ambient stereo image of the kit being picked up by the two overhead mics above the kit it's lower in volume than the cymbals, but nonetheless, it is in there with the cymbals. So every time we bring in our cymbals, we're also introducing this ambient stereo image of the kit as well, albeit it's low in volume. OK, but of course, this is not a real pair of overheads. So as I said at the beginning, we can cheat. Any drums we want can be in or out of the overheads. So look, I could do this. Um, I could take all my main drums, kick, snare, toms, and the hats out of the overheads. So now the overheads is just cymbals. Okay, now that means there's no more ambient image of the kit here. So I can do this then. I can have a completely dry mix of my drums by using just my close mic channels, which are dry and accurate. There's no room sound really on these at all. And when I introduce my cymbals, it's not bringing in any ambient sound of the kit at all so my kit stays completely dry so I can do that you see or I can do it back to front I could put all of my main drums kick snare toms and the hats into the overheads then I'm going to take all those drums out of the room mics completely okay so my kick snare toms and hats are only in the overheads but not in any of the room mics and then my cymbals I'm going to take out of the overheads. Now if you take your cymbals out of the overheads which is their output the only other place you can hear them on is either of the room mics stereo pair room mics A or mono room mic B so my cymbals are now going to the stereo pair of room mics A. So what I've got now is on the stereo room mic channel here I've got just the cymbals Okay, it's a little bit of a far away sound because those uh, that stereo pair of room mics, they're away from the kit. But nonetheless, I've got my cymbals here isolated. But the main thing is, on the overheads channel now, there are no cymbals. Just the kit. Okay, now the kit, normally it's on this channel, but way lower than the cymbals. So if you had the fader around here, the cymbals would be nice, normal, loud volume. And this kit would be nice and low underneath it. But there's no cymbals anymore. So we can turn this right up with a gainer. Now what that means then is that, now have a listen to it. Now the kit, the ambient image of the kit being picked up by the overhead mics, it's been brought up to a loud normal volume now. Okay, so now this overhead channel is being used as something different. Now this overhead channel becomes an ambient pair of stereo room mics giving us an ambient image of the kit from three or four feet above the kit. It's a different type of ambient sound. It's a different ambient sound to the room mics. And we can use that against our close mic sound to bring in ambient room sound from above. And it gives us another type of kit sound. And then our cymbals can be on room mic A or room mic B channel. At the moment they're on A. So you can do that.
Okay, or now you've got this overhead channel gained up to give you've got the kit there now, nice and loud. And now what we can do is put the cymbals back. But look, if we put the overheads back, have a listen. We've gained this up to bring the kit up nice and loud. But we've put the ride back in, have a listen. Ah! The ride is way too loud. So all we do is we turn the ride right down. And then let's put the crashes back in. Turn them right down first and then put them back into the overheads. So now we've got our cymbals back in the overheads but they've been turned way down as low as they can go. Okay, And the whole channel has been turned way up with the gainer. So now the level of the kit and the cymbals is the same. The kit isn't way lower than the cymbals anymore. And now we have a completely different overhead sound here. We've got the cymbals but the kit is as loud as the cymbals now. We've got a much louder overhead kit sound on our cymbal channel. And we can use that against our close mic kit sound. Yeah, easy peasy. And of course you can mix and match. You lower this a bit. Whoops. You, you lower the whole channel a bit, which lowers the sound of the kit. Then bring up your cymbals just a tad. Just a tad. Now your cymbals are, uh, uh, your, your kit and cymbals are a little less the same. The kit is slightly lower now. See what I mean? So you mix and balance like that. Okay, so you do all that stuff. And, and lastly, I just want to show you that, you know, everything in the kit can go to the room mics, the overheads, or the lead. Well, the, the kick, snare, and toms can go to the lead. But all the rest of the kit can all go to the overheads or the room mics. Now, all these, all these drums have got their own outputs. So if you also send a little bit of the, you know, the drums out to the room mics by, by switching you know, the drums, the cymbals or whatever, into the room mics or into the overheads. Okay, then these are extra ambient channels because they're adding in ambient signals for those drums from room mics, from the leak and from the overheads to complement and to go with their close mic channels. So the room mics are extra, you know, they're extra ambient channels. The leak is an extra ambient channel. And for most of the drums, apart from the cymbals, the overheads is also an ambient pair of mics, you know. So the point is, if you send drums to those ambient channels, the overheads, the leak, or the room, you switch them in, and the amount of those drums arriving at those ambient channels is just fixed by how loud the drums are naturally being played. So if you listen to the stereo pair of room mics, the drums in that pair of room mics are going to be as loud as they're being played, because that mic, that pair of mics is just picking up the sound of the drums in the room. So however loud the drummer is playing them, that's how loud they'll be in the room mic. Or in the leak, or in the overheads. But what if you want to cheat and change that level to get some special effect? Well, you can do that. Um, look, I'll show you, look. Let's put the kick going to room mic B, and the snare going to room mic B. So let's have a listen to that soloed. Room mic B. It's just the kick and snare. Let's gain it up loud. Okay, so we've got a nice loud mono room mic sound for the kick and snare there. But you might want to do a special effect where you have more kick than snare on this ambient room mic. The only way to do that is to turn the kick up and the snare down. And that means more kick goes out to this ambient channel. Just turn that gainer down a bit. That means I've turned the kick up, so more kick arrives at the room mic B, because it's switched to room mic B. I've turned the snare down, it's also switched to room mic B, but because it's turned down, less snare arrives at room mic B channel. So now I've got a balance I want on room mic B channel. I've got more kick, because it's turned up, and I've got less snare, because it's turned down. So this is mostly kick drum now. That's what I want, but because the kick is turned up, and the snare is turned down, it means that the balance of those drums arriving at their close mic channels here will be disturbed. Okay, so let's have a listen. Oh, now you see the kick is too loud because it's been turned up on the instrument, so I need to turn the kick down, and the snare needs to be turned up. So I rebalance them, and then I bring in room mic B, and it's mostly kick. And then I rebalance again to taste, you know. 
obviously the snare would probably have a, a compressor on it to give it a bit more welly you see so you all have to rebalance the point I'm saying is is that you can use the game controls for any of the drums to change the balance of them arriving at the room mic channels or the leak or the overheads but if you do that it also changes how much those drums arrive how loud those drums arrive at their individual close mic channels so a certain amount of balancing has to be done rebalancing okay okay so there you go that's all your outputs yeah Oh yeah, and there's one last thing I forgot to mention about the outputs, um, populating the channel strips for the outputs here in the mixer. Okay, well, if you want to learn how to do that, go and watch the last part of chapter two, where I show everything about populating the channel strips with a basic multi-output kit, okay? Because it's exactly the same here with a producer patch kit. Okay, so, you know, if you want to get into populating these channel strips, go and watch the last part of chapter two, which explains everything about it, okay? Okay, and that is everything for your outputs now.